This is Ground Affected. My name is Brent, and welcome to getting to the shops, but forgetting your shopping list at home. So, you want to be a commission painter? This video, I'm going to discuss a little bit about commission painting while I show you the process of painting Gumma Sezik from Gin Wars. The links for Gin Wars will be in the description below, as well as TD Saber, who is the sculptor who sculpted this amazing model. Now, this is not something I would usually paint, nor is it something I would keep in my own personal collection. However, when you're commissioned to paint things for people, sometimes you're gonna have to paint things that are not necessarily the things you would enjoy painting. That doesn't mean you can't stretch your wings and learn to paint things that are outside of your realm of interest, as well as sometimes Pushing yourself beyond your boundaries is the way to grow and get better at what you do. And yes, I do realize it looks like he's about to stab me every time he goes around. And as usual, I'm going to ask you to click the like button, consider subscribing, and if I have not earned that subscription from you by the end of the video, it's as easy as clicking unsubscribe and follow the instructions I will give you in the last few seconds of this video. And before we carry on, I'd like to remind you that I have a Patreon which gives you access to our exclusive Discord, where we chat every day about printing and painting and now other things that have nothing to do with printing and painting as well. But without any further ado, let's get straight into painting Gumma Sezik from Gen Wars. I use Vallejo Black Surface Primer to prime all my models and while I'm base coating the rest of this model I'm going to talk a little bit about commission painting. Commission painting can sometimes take over a little bit too much of your life if you allow it to. As long as you keep things in control and make sure you're in control of the whole process, it makes it a little bit easier for you to maintain the life that you need to live as well as working on the models that you want to work on. And I only say this because it's very easy to let it get carried away. It's easy to see dollar signs or pound signs and just jump straight in to taking as many jobs as you possibly can. And very, very soon you'll overrun yourself. Kind of as you can see, I'm sitting in the middle of a commission and, um, and my airbrush is packed up and this is something I need to work on. These are little things that pop up in the middle of commissions that you don't think about when you start or take on that commission. Now, with the negative aside, Taking on a commission is probably one of the best ways for you to improve your skills if you have the skills to start taking on the commissions in the first place. And what do I mean by skills? That doesn't mean you have to be a professional painter or the best painter you'll ever be in your life, but you do need to have someone asking you to create a commission for them. If nobody's asking about commissions, you're clearly not ready for commissions. This is nothing against you. This is just how the world works. And on a total side note, while we're looking at me splodge paint all over the top of these bases, this is one of the best ways to wet blend. If you were ever wanting to do something like this, slap on a load of paint, just smudge it all together with your paintbrush and you get a super cool blend. It's probably the best way to do rocks if you ask me. And as I base coat these skulls, I'm going to talk a little bit more about taking on projects that are not something that you would normally do or not something that is to your own specific taste. This is one of the things that is going to come out of taking commissions on. As soon as you take a commission on, maybe the first one or two is going to be something that you want to paint. But unfortunately, it's going to come around where someone's going to ask you to paint something that is not of your own interest. You have two choices when this comes up. You can totally turn that down. Or you can take it on and use it as a learning curve or use it as something that you can use to further your skills and make yourself a better painter in the end. Now granted I'm not doing anything groundbreaking by dry brushing and making a base of rocks look similar to a base of rocks but this is something that is definitely way out of my realm. I don't do generally scary demon like creatures. And this is going to be something very challenging for me because the kind of palette that you would use in terms of colors for this kind of model is very different to the palette that I would use in my everyday arts and other paintings that I would do. And so in a way, this is what can make taking commissions a little bit challenging because these challenges can start to eat at your time. Every time you think about the next step, this is gonna take time and it's gonna eat away at your own personal time. Even as I say this, it is currently 4 a.m. and I'm busy voiceovering a video because I have to keep up with the amount of work that I have taken on by taking on commission. Back to the model now, I'm gonna spray an undercoat of white so that I can get the translucent orange that I have to go over the top of that with a little bit of translucent red and create a bit of a glow on the insides of the wings. I'm gonna use a wash 
to try and darken just some of the edges but not to change the color drastically by the way have you ever thought of using saran wrap or cling film to mask off areas that you don't want to get paint on this is one of the best ways of doing it to be honest you can throw some cling film around it and it will conform to most of the areas and tape off whatever sticks out i had to paint a glow coming from the inside of this axe i think the glow comes from the inside of the demon himself but of course the powers are translated over onto his weapon so i worked my way through deep red all the way up to a bright yellow with whitish yellow on the edges i eventually realized that this wasn't orange enough and I did come back and I used a fluorescent orange to bring back more of the orange but before that I had to go in and do all the detailing by painting this intricate pattern all over the axe. Getting back to speaking about commissions one very important thing about commissions I think that everybody needs to take into account is that you need to also be able to charge what your time is worth. Painting these models tend to take a lot of time especially preparation setting them up for printing all of these things need to be taken into account so make sure if you're taking on a commission make sure to take into account the setup time the printing time as well as the painting time included into your materials because of course every little piece starts to count it starts to add up really fast when you're painting a large model such as this Guma Sizzizik these paints can add up very very quickly I went through nearly an entire bottle of leather brown from Army Painter just on this model alone and that's because I had two of these to do that means I'm not only painting one when I'm done painting one I have to paint a whole nother one because the customer had ordered two of the exact same models this used up so much of my paint and it's something that you don't take into account before you start taking on commissions. I know for a fact I never took that into account until I started running low really fast on paints and inks and different things that I need to use to paint my models were just starting to run out really quickly and I only started to realize this after each model I would run out of a new color and I'd have to buy a new color and slowly but surely I started adding that into my price. Unfortunately the price of living is also going up so you need to put the price up to a point where if you're working for an entire week but you can't afford to buy yourself a McDonald's meal after painting someone a model you're probably charging way too little and you're definitely doing a disservice to yourself. Don't be afraid to charge what your value is worth. Getting back to Gumasirik and Gumasirik I still have not learned how to say this guy's name. But getting back onto the model, I painted his eyes white and this was the base because I was going to later paint the orange over the top. If I painted the orange straight into the dark eye, it would not be as bright. Most of the detailing on this model comes out of dry brushing. Because there's a lot of crisp ridge edges, I'm going to use that to my advantage. Also, there is a really difficult thing to do on this model, which is like an inner glow on the inside of the monster. This I created by placing down a white first and that was going to be to create the bright orange that I needed to go over the top so it meant that the orange that went down had to go down with white first then orange and then a yellow highlight to make that look more like a burning fire that's deep inside of this guy's body that's burning out and this is something that I also feel like I need to talk about is that when I had started this model I had no idea how I was going to do this and I'd already up to this point spent at least 15 hours perhaps 20 hours just on the most of the model that I'd already painted so doing this step could have taken all that time and thrown it away for absolutely no reason however I trust in my own process and I trust what my mind is telling me is the right way to do things and I just keep pressing on this is something that I think takes a bit of guts and courage to work like this. I believe I've heard a few painters say it before. It's called painting bravely. I've always said there's a fine line between bravery and stupidity. However, I think we managed to make it just brave enough for this one. Working on the fire on the core of his chest, making sure that those highlight edges of yellow are nice and bright and bold so that everything stands out and looks shiny enough. Just around the rim of his collar, I'm going to darken that little section of the skin or bones or whatever it is. But I'm going to darken that up so that it gives a little bit more contrast between the shoulders, the body and the face. And this is it put together. In a previous video, I showed you how I put magnets in a model, specifically this model. You can find that somewhere on my channel. And that's the end of this model.
I hope that this video gave you even the smallest insight into what it's like being a commission painter or even taking on a small commission for perhaps one of your friends or a colleague or something like that. Sometimes commission painting can be difficult. Sometimes it can take away your free time and that's time that you want for yourself to be able to paint things that you wanna paint. However, the reward for commission painting and seeing your customers excitement and joy when they see the piece in their own hands that's something that for me is one of the things that keeps me doing commissions. This is my way of being able to afford my hobby and help keep pushing further by getting new equipment and better and fancier things as I go along. Without my commissions, I probably wouldn't be able to afford all the paints that I have or the new 3D printer that I got a couple months back. It was actually due to Gen War's commissions that I was able to upgrade from a Sonic Mini 4K to the Sonic Mighty. This gave me more space to be able to print. Doing commissions has actually helped me to be able to afford things to make my hobby better but at the same time this is how I've learned to get better and better at the hobby itself. Enough about all the rambling at the moment let's get straight on to thanking the patrons that joined in the last week. Blub D, J Carbon, Dan Benway, Arkham Red 97, not to be confused with Arkham Red 96. And as per usual, I'm going to ask you to give it a like, consider subscribing if you haven't done so already. And this is about the time of the video where I tell you that if you didn't like any of this, it's easy. Just click the dislike button and f off. Holy crap, now I've got to go paint another one of Gumma Sazarik.